Hey, is it, are you struggling out there? Is it really slow out there for you? All right, um, I just completed a run. Uh, according to uh, what I'd agreed upon, it was a 158 mile trip that originated from Columbia. And then there were two stops. First stop was in Florence, South Carolina. It's like about an hour from uh, Columbia. And then the second stop is in Pauly's Island, which is where I'm at and, and I'm leaving. Uh, from Florence to Pauly's Island is um, because you have to take the back road just nearly uh, right at about an hour and 45 minute drive about 80, 85 miles and my agreed upon haul rate was $300 I'd asked for $325 um, he agreed to $300 and this is for um, somehow it's a, it's a it's app based but it's considered logistics expediting. And this is this is my fourth um, delivery opportunity with these guys. Uh, my first one was in or was to Orangeburg, and then the second one was to Orangeburg, then to Greenwood. I did not like that one. I thought that was a dumb a dummy a dummy move on my part. The second one eh, was almost just as bad. It was a drop off in nearby Georgetown, but then I drove another hour and a half over to Charleston, um, off in an area that was actually on the other side of Charleston, going towards Keop, Kiowa Island, the famed Kiowa Island where the PGA um, uh, major tournaments have been held um, on, on a, from time to time over the years. And that that one paid me three twenty five. dollars The one before, uh, that was from Orangeburg to Greenwood, paid two twenty-five, and then the Orangeburg solo was a hundred. So it's not like I'm, I'm making, I'm making um, like robbers on this, but it kind of keeps in this particular case three hundred dollars kind of keeps keeps the um, keeps the machine rolling, keeps the machine moving. Um, and the way this month has started so far, April, um, this is my best paying opportunity uh, so thus far. In fact, it's the best paying opportunity I've had in the past week. Now, the reason for this segment of the Gig Geezer is really just to talk, is really to talk about or touch upon um, and, and pose the question: Hey, is it? Are you struggling out there? Is it really slow out there for you? I can tell you, at least for the past week, it really has been rough. Now, some people may say, "Well, you know, you're you're in uh, you're in the spring break time of the year, whereby um, schools are closed, and uh, inherently, at least in South Carolina, people don't come to, to Columbia for vacation. They get the hell out of Columbia. And I've said that on many occasions." It's not easy to generate ten thousand dollars revenue while owning and operating a Sprinter slash cargo van. At least, at, at least with the business model that I have, which is largely dependent upon gig apps, um, be it gig food delivery apps, and then last mile gig delivery apps, and then the brokered opportunities, the expediting, the brokered slash expediting opportunities, sprinkled in with a little bit of a cash gain. Um, it's it, it's not easy. I mean. Uh, if anything, I may be guilty of glamorizing um, and glorifying how I've hit, I've reached that number. But I want to think that um, I've never, I've, I know for a fact that I, I know, and you can go back through the Gig Geezer archive. I've never stated a monthly goal of ten thousand. I have stated the goal of trying to earn three, four, five hundred dollars in a day, um, and then I also mentioned the goal of hitting six six figures um and i'm kind of repeating myself though but the goal was to put myself in a position where i can talk commercial money uh with the banks because of some of the um scaling um opportunities that i was looking i was thinking of at the time 
Well, I've kind of changed my thoughts about that right now in that I don't want to deal with any financing or anything like that. I want to, I want to try to build just the, the cash, the, the cash in hand type route because, um, you know, quite honestly, um, while I've been able to make my payments on this van every month, I've been able to make my payments on the, on the uh, commercial insurance. Um, it, is, it is something when you have something paid for. I've had some conversations with someone um, and over the, over several months in which he actually owns all of his vehicles. He owns his van and he owns both of his box trucks. He owns, those are straight up cash purchases. And, there, and his situation is different from mine and his situation is different from other people, including yours. But that's, that's really the ideal situation you want to be in if you can, if it could be done. You want to be able to minimize your expenditures as much as possible especially when it get when when you're when um the money is not coming in like as you would like that's one less thing that you got to concern yourself with it kind of uh, using a bowling analogy it kind of loosens your arm swing so to speak now um i what is it that has caused the market to go as it has i i I don't know. I mean, it's easy to say it's oversaturation, which is probably true. And that um, the worst, I mean, for as many people who have who have gotten out of this, there's just as many people coming in and probably more because they're seeing content like mine and others on you on YouTube and other place and other places of social media where people are, are posting how they've earned they earn this much and they earn X number of dollars in 20 minutes or X number of dollars in this number of hours, and I earned this much on this trip. And I've been guilty of posting stuff like that, but I'd like to think also in recent months, I've been a lot more responsible and sparingly and, 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 being, and putting stuff out like that rather sparingly and maybe use what I have done on certain opportunities with, a, with some type of a lesson with it, um, something that, that provokes thought and you understand somewhat of the decisions or some of the actions that went with those earning opportunities. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is that with the gig apps, particularly the last mile gig apps, at least in my market, the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area, and it could be in other markets, I have noticed, and you can you can you can use whichever app you can put in you can put in whatever app you want to fill in the blank. I've noticed with certain apps, the earning, the earning opportunity, the earning capacity has diminished. In other words, they've cut the damn rates. And, um, and there's also like this little hocus pocus game that's going around with one of the, with one of the aggregators. It's like this, one of the apps that used to, and again, you can put it, you can fill in the blank with it because it could be different in your market. Um, but, for example, but with one of the aggregators, what they're doing is they they started um, prioritizing the opportunities with other lower paying apps, other known notorious lower paying apps. Okay, and that kind of caught that kind of caught some traction. And then those opportunities that, like, say your your main app, your go to app, you were seeing on that app, they started to diminish, and then. That app now is kind of falling in line with the other apps by going with the known contracted rate by the aggregator, one of the suppliers of, with one of the suppliers of opportunities. So let's say, for example, I am that aggregator. I'm not naming names, but let's say it's Geezer, Geezer aggregator, and let's say that I have. Um, a contract, a big contract with Acme, Acme um, widgets. Okay, and upon entering into that contract, I I also have a schedule of how things would be paid if you go if you deal with me. Okay, but the apps can either go exactly according to the letter as what my contract is with Acme Widgets, or you can for a while try to 
um, pay drivers as you normally have paid drivers, but eventually that catches up with you. I'm going to satisfy Acme widgets. And the way I'm going to satisfy Acme widgets is by making sure that there are people who, that, that there is a constant supply of people who are available to fulfill those order opportunities as they become available on your respective app. Now, if you want to fall in line, you may have to start paying drivers less. And that's what's happening with a couple of the apps. A couple of apps, at least in my market, where you were looking forward to those bigger paying opportunities, they all but disappeared. And it seems not to matter how you try to gain, how you try to manipulate forcing opportunities, it's almost the same across all the apps. So now you've got to make some adjustments. Um, if you go, if you use the, if you entertain the, the talk of market oversaturation, well, you can always talk about thirsties. And I guess, you know, thirsties is something that you're going to deal with. It's like flies. It's like mosquitoes. They're, they're always going to, they're always, they're always around. Now, how do you effectively deal with them is, is on you. It's on me. But when you've got people who are, who are trying to make what they can, however way they can, it fucks up things for everybody else. Um, I know like this week, I've been blitzed on a couple of uh, uh, last mile opportunities in which you get you have a chance to bid on, bid on them. And uh, I mean, I, I've had no chance. I've had no chance. I mean, there's an offer amount, then there's a, then there's a, a, a claim amount, but then you could bid on it and try to make more money. Um, but when you're dealing with a thirsty or you're dealing with somebody who don't know what the fuck they're doing, they're, they're telling, they're telling the app company, they're telling the algorithm that it's okay to go for less. Kind of like DoorDash and its algorithm. Um, and something I've talked about before. Now I mentioned this, um, I mentioned this briefly in um, this segment of the Get Geezer. I'm gonna mention it again. Now, um, I'm just gonna paraphrase the lyrics to the song Sad Cafe. Um, you start out, you start out using words like, uh, you, start, you, start, you start out being very passionate about trying to get people to understand where you're coming from that, hey, if you, if you use your, if you think things through, you can affect how these apps send orders across, across to you because it's all algorithm based. It's all algorithm stuff takes in what your your it takes in your tendencies and it takes in your selection and then it uses it. It can use they it use it is used against you in such a way that it benefits the company. And that was that was a consistent argument that I made. And there were people who came across came. In, who, who spoke? Who spoke of me as being a troublemaker, a hellraiser, a rabble rouser? But I continued to talk that way. The problem with my talking that way, I'm finding that I'm two, three years older. I'm that much closer to Social Security and Medicare, and I'm finding that. And as I paraphrase the lyrics to Sad Cafe. So if I were to make reference to those lyrics to Sad Cafe, the song that I've mentioned already, it talks about how, how, how change seems to happen very slowly if it, if it changes, if change happens at all. And then there's no use asking why it just happens that way. And then he says, well, so why don't you meet me at midnight, baby? inside the sad cafe in other words you know what I look back after all these decades and what I've seen is that I've gotten old you've gotten old they've gotten old and not, and not much has changed over time and that's kind of and that's kind of a you know what that's kind of a sad that's kind of a that's why it's called the sad cafe because it's a sad commentary to life man um, 
the people who really speak up and speak out tend to eventually get old. They tend to eventually die off. And the people who, who you trying to argue on behalf of, they still do what they're going to do. And then the people that you tend, that you're trying to fight against, well, they still do what they're going to do. And that was kind of the that was kind of the whole point of this segment of the Gig Geezer when I mentioned about uh, DoorDash. DoorDash is going to do what it's going to do. Um, it's just a matter of what can you do to um, benefit yourself while you still have that opportunity. That's something to think about. In other words, I'm having to deal with. I'm having to deal with. I'm having to make certain decisions as with a lot of other drivers because of how the market has evolved over the past year and in fact this year specifically some drivers have tried to hold out about hoping that things would pick up i for i for one had always been somewhat skeptical and i'm glad that i've remained skeptical uh, because I've not seen that onslaught of opportunities as what people hope to see by this time of the year. Um, so, does that mean I fought? Does that mean I also get in line and do like the Romans? No, I'm still gonna be. I'm still gonna be the rebel rouser. I'm still gonna be the hellraiser. I'm gonna be the rebel. I'm gonna be the one who still speaks out against the stuff. I also know that I've got. I also got to pick and choose my battles. That's really what it get. That's what it really amounts to. And so, hopefully, what I've done is provoke your thoughts on this particular segment of the Gig Geezer. Not every, not every Gig Geezer segment is going to be about you know these great glorious stories of how I earn a grand or even ten G's of the month. I'm just going to talk to you. Um, it's kind of like the way my my J school instructor Bob Jowles used to um, relate to us. Um, a lot of a lot of what he did wasn't on the chalkboard. I can I can count the, the actual lectures that he made on a chalkboard, and I still got notes to some of those lectures, those early lectures, and we're talking almost 40 years ago. But the way Bob Giles taught was that he related life life experiences and life lessons to you, and hopefully there's something that you get out of that. And hopefully there's something that you get out of this segment of the Gig Geezer. And with that. If you like the content that's been provided in this segment or in any other segment, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others. And I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm in with Lane. As always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.